and welcome to our first episode in the new series of Life Support. The only lifestyle show that tells you exactly how to live your life. By giving you all the top experts and all our expertise. And I must say, I'm very excited to be back. Yeah, can you believe it? Here we are again. I'm Sigourney, and as a modern woman, I feel it's my responsibility to be here for all Australian women, empowering them by putting them in their right place. And I'm Dr Rudy. I'm your media medico and money mentor. And if you actually want to be healthy and happy, I'll show you how. Hey, I'm Penny, and I'll be fast-tracking your street education by giving you the cheat sheet on how to scan the man. I'm Todd, Life Support's DIY guy. And with the right tools, half a brain and a bit of luck, you'll find there's nothing on earth that you can't do yourself. Tonight, I've got a simple safety tip if you enjoy a spot of rock fishing. And I've got a neat trick that'll ensure you have access to all the parental cash you need. I've got some wonderful dress-up ideas for children's parties. And in my men's health segment, I'll be looking at the career benefits of homosexuality. Oh, jeez, Dr Rudy, I'll be keeping my eyes out for that segment. Yes, we've got all that and so much more. So let's get started. Living in a land girt by sea is tops, and fishing this sea is even topser. But this maritime wonderland is a fickle mistress, and sometimes she can turn downright nasty. All fishing is fraught with danger, but rock fishing is especially perilous. It seems like every other day some poor sap is struck by a freak wave and banished into Neptune's depths. So if you're like me and you love the ocean, but not enough to spend the rest of your life in it, well then you're going to need some specialised equipment. This here is a ramset gun. It's popular in the building industry. It uses small explosive charges to fire nails into concrete. And this here is an old pair of boots. So all I do is walk on down to my favourite fishing spot, make any necessary adjustments for tide and weather conditions, and then place my feet in the right spot. Now this is the important thing. Make sure you place the boots down and then fire the gun, being sure you're not wearing the boots at the time. Voila! So now if any freak wave comes in, I can be sure to remain exactly in my chosen location. The beauty of this life-saving device is its versatility. You can have more than one pair of boots and more than one spot. So if you enjoy a spot of rock fishing, take a tip from Todd. Bolt your body to bedrock so you don't sink like a stone. If you're a modern woman like me, you really need to be cuddled by your current hottie all night. I personally can't get enough of the spoon position. Unfortunately, I've yet to meet a man who will cuddle me for more than a few obligatory minutes and then he's done. So what do you do? Well, tonight, I'm going to show you how you can get all the spooning your heart desires. Now, what does a man like to hold on to more than anything in the world? Well, okay, apart from that, what does a man like to hold on to more than anything in the world? A beer in a stubby holder. As we've all observed, a man will hold on to one of these for days. So it's simple logic then that what you need to wear to bed is a stubby holder. I suppose that's it then. Don't be too sad, okay? <laughs> the worst part of a relationship is the breaking up bit. Gee, I'm gonna be real sad when I get into the whole lot of women tonight. See, this is what sucks. After a breakup, us chicks will sit at home and cry about it for days. Whereas a guy will go out and get onto a whole bunch of tarts. Well, you don't have to suffer alone while he heads out and goes wild. There is something you can do to make sure he doesn't have too much fun. 
Wait till you know his mobile phone's turned off. Then call and leave a message. Something like this. Hi, NG, it's me. Um, I don't know how to tell you this, but a couple of weeks ago, um, I had some blood tests done and the results have just arrived. The thing is, I might be HIV positive, which means you might be too. Anyway, uh, call me back. We'll talk. Bye. That's right. Tell him you might be HIV positive. That'll stop him nailing someone else straight away. I know this seems a little harsh, but you don't want to have to worry about him being with someone else while you're upset and all alone. What'll happen is he'll have to get a blood test done. And the thing about the HIV virus is it can be present but undetectable for up to three months. So even after the initial test clears him, he'll have to wait another three months to be tested again. So for a whole three months while you're getting over him, you know for sure that he's suffering too. Kind of evens things up a little. <sighs> so girls, to really reduce the symptoms of heartbreak hell, use HIV positive protection. I'll be okay. See ya. Well, Penny, I must say I'm quite surprised. I've never seen you upset about a boy before. I'm actually quite proud. Oh, that? No, that was just a demo. Some chicks suffer when the bitter end comes and I just want to help them out of that hole. Personally, I couldn't give a rat's about NG. It was time for a change anyway. If you learn to cry over a man, I think you'd find you'd be much happier. <sighs> yeah, anyway. Hey, Sigourney, did you notice at the start of the show that Rudy's doll was all bandaged up? Yes, of course I did. I think we all did. Anyway, he's not trying to conceal anything. Yeah, like, so... Well, what's up with that? Oh, listen to you all concerned. He's all right. No, it's not that. I just don't like to be left out of the loop. So what's the story? Well, during the series hiatus, Dr Rudy took in a little heli scheme. You know, they helicopter you in to ski where the powder is purest. Right. And he had an accident. Yes, he sprained his ankle. His ankle? But his face is all bandaged. Yes, while he was waiting to be rescued, he got frostbite. On his face. <laughs> He's got a frostbitten face. And it could have been more serious. But luckily, he knows a surgeon who specialises in face saving. So lucky for us, his boyish good looks will continue to grace life support. Yeah, well, in that regard, I'm kind of digging the bandages. Well, speak of the devil. Here's Dr Rudy now with more comforting counsel for concerned mothers. You know... I get a lot of letters from concerned parents whose children have come out to them as gay. Like this one from Mavanwi McGregor, who is worried that her son's homosexuality will affect his career in the armed forces. Well, Mavanwi, being openly gay in the Australian military isn't a problem. From a PR point of view, the homosexual is a perfect soldier. Let's face it, no one likes to see a family man come home in a body bag. And now that your son is out, his career will probably soar. You see, thanks to the trend of hiring homosexuals to appease the politically correct, normal employees are being passed over for promotion. That's right, there's a glass ceiling all right and it's smudged with straight men's handprints. And it's not just the military. As a gay, your son is open to a wider variety of prestigious jobs. With a healthy income, he can enjoy spending on just himself right now. He has no dependents and no need to save for his superannuation because growing old is an indignity he'll probably be spared from. But that's a small price to pay when he can enjoy fellatio from someone who actually knows what they're doing. So there you have it, Mavanwi, and all you other military mothers. Rest easy. Not only is it okay to be gay, but it gives you plenty of positive pull in today's Nambi Bambi society. Bye now. Oh, good day. Every man loves to have a beer every once in a while. Todd, I told you to cut down. You drink too much. But this is the problem. I'm not too keen on the nagging that comes with it. And if you're like me and your lady friend wants you to drink less beer, there is something you can do. Today, Todd's tip is all about drinking all the beer you need without getting your other half offside. The thing is, beer's too identifiable. 
One look at a glass filled with the amber fluid and it's obvious what you're drinking. So, what we're going to do is paint the inside of the glass white. That's right. We're going to make it look like we're drinking milk when we're really drinking beer. It's quite an effective visual device. Now, I've chosen a white paint that's a perfect match for milk. It's called milk white. Now make sure that the paint you buy is able to come into contact with food. Your local DIY shop should have plenty. It's made for painting crockery. See how I've painted nearly up to the rim but not all the way to the top? That's where you pour your beer up to. <sighs> Look at that. It's a glass of beer that looks like it's a glass of milk. I'm feeling healthy just looking at it. Now let's see if it works on the little lady. Oh Todd, I love it when you're healthy sweetie. Did you see that? Praise instead of nagging. So, take another top tip from Todd and veil your ale in one of these grouse glazed glasses. Cheers. It seems that since the beginning of time, men have always had trouble finding the Grafenberg spot or the elusive G-spot. It's been so elusive that even some medical men have claimed it was something us modern women made up to maintain our mystery. Well, tonight, girls, I'm going to show you a way to guide even the most uncoordinated man right to where it feels good. Now, a woman's G-spot is located approximately two to three inches inside the vaginal canal on the anterior or front wall of the vagina. It varies for every individual woman. Now, seeing as a man can't seem to tell when he's found it, it's up to us to let him know in a layman's language that males understand. Work out for yourself where your G-spot is. Then, on a condom like this one, mark from the tip of the condom A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Making sure the G is where your G-spot is. Then as he enters you and gets up to G, he knows that his tip is on your G-spot and that's where he should fully focus friction. And remember, you can also mark letters past G all the way to say Q. And finally, simply roll it back up and you're ready to go. And there you have it, ladies. You've made finding the G-spot as easy as A, B, C. The what? The Grafenberg? <laughs> Uh, usually the boy know very well more than me. <laughs> the boy know better than me. <laughs> Pass. Where's that? What the fuck's a graphic bag? The cheese spot, Mum. Oh, that's the cheese spot. <laughs> I don't know. Where's that? Um, I don't know. Somewhere inside her. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Mum knows has no idea, and I'm not here to. I didn't know what that one was. Well, young Penny, some interesting observations out there. Yeah, and I've got to say, I've made an interesting observation in here. What exactly does that mean? Oh, come on, man. Frostbite on your face? Don't bullshit a bullshitter. I can't be duped as easily as Sigourney, and especially Todd. What's the real reason behind the bandages? This is all quite preposterous. Are you implying I've been lying? I just think that people at home would be interested to know the real reason. Oh, which is what? Pray tell. Oh, come on, you've done a little bit of a makeover on yourself. Maybe a little tuck around the turkey neck, ironed out the crow's feet? If you don't mind, I've never had a turkey neck or crow's feet for that matter. No. All right, I admit it, yes. I've had some minor corrective surgery. Well, duh. The fact of the matter is I'm quite tired from all the attention that comes from being a national gay icon. Because it appears some people can't separate being an icon from actually being gay. And how does cosmetic surgery fix that? Not cosmetic, Penny. Corrective. I'm afraid I may have given a slight impression of gayness. So I've corrected that with some new heterosexual facial features. Because in fact, I'm as straight as Rove McManus. And when the bandages come off next week, you'll all know it for sure. That'll be something to look forward to. Anyway, I think we should move on now, Dr Rudy. That's right, Penny. And let's do that by taking a look at this. Parking in the inner city can be fraught with difficulties. Even if you do find a park, 
thieves and parking fines can almost make you wish you didn't own a car. Car parks are expensive and a garage will set you back at least 100 bucks a week. But don't despair, because tonight I'm going to show you how to get a secure park 100% of the time for nearly nothing. Firstly, you're going to need some timber and some paint. Now, I picked up this scrap ply and 2B1 for only 45 bucks. Now, we're going to cut the ply into two pieces in a parallelogram shape like this. Next, you'll need a piece like so and two for the ends. Then, just paint it with any old paint you've got lying around. Then, just throw it all on top of the ute and then drive to your desired parking destination. Now, if you choose your time well enough, you shouldn't have any trouble finding your perfect par. So once you've found your spot, simply screw it all together. And there you have it. Looks to the world like a large skip bin, but in fact, it's your very own private garage. Now, when you're putting on this front section, make sure you use two hinges, so it'll work like a door. Now, the other important thing to remember is to put a lid on your faux bin. I mean, you want to protect your vehicle from the elements, and you also don't want to come back and find it buried under a mountain of other people's rubbish. So simply screw on a roofing piece and then decorate it with some durable, affordable and natural finishings. So, take a tip from Todd. Don't let persistent parking problems punish you. Produce your own protective parking place today and you'll be guaranteed a park 100% of the time. Look at this. The best things about dads is their checkbooks. And it doesn't matter how old you are or how long ago you left home, dads will always be there to help their little girls out of trouble. But sometimes even dads draw the line and they won't write you a check for the full amount you ask for. In circumstances like these, you have to take matters into your own hands. Today, I'm going to show you a neat trick that'll ensure you have all the cash you need. Wouldn't it be good if Dad just signed a blank cheque and you filled in the amount you asked for? This is a piece of carbon paper. Now we've all seen how this works. Today we're going to make it work for you. Simply cut out a piece about this big. What we're going to do is slip this a couple of cheques underneath the top cheque. Make sure it's covering the signature space. What will happen is, when your dad goes to write out a cheque for you, he'll also be signing the cheque underneath without even realising it. And because the carbon paper is over the signature, the rest of the cheque is left blank. So you can fill it in how you want. Watch this. How much do you need? 800, Daddy. I'll give you five. OK, Daddy. absolutely nothing else written on it. So, there you go. Get yourself some carbon paper and get two cheques for the price of one. See ya. These days, we all know it's politically incorrect for children to play games like cowboys and Indians, especially considering this is actually little cowgirl. And not only that, but these children are playing a game that's recreating the genocide of Native Americans. Excuse me for speaking out, but Australia is already overwhelmed by American culture. So, if you're a mom and you're organising a children's party where the kids want to play dress-ups, then why not celebrate our proud Australian heritage and play colonial boys and indigenes? The first thing you need to do is couture the colonial boys' outfits. Patterns are available in books like this one of children's fancy dress costumes. They're easy to make, so enjoy taking the time to get it right and you'll be rewarded many times over. You'll also find a pattern for their hat, which is simply made from an ice cream container. 
Then, with some white pants and black socks and shoes, the little darlings will be ready to defend the land. Now for the indigenes. Once the children have chosen who'll play the baddies, it's time for some face painting. Remember to use an acrylic paint that washes off easily. It'd be awful if your children looked like this permanently. Don't they look adorable? As you can see, you don't need to worry about patterns or sewing for these outfits. Just grabbing anything that's lying around will achieve the authentic attire. And to finish the ensemble, I asked Todd to whip up these adorable timber guns. Aren't they darling? And as we all know, little boys love playing with sticks. So you're best to let the indigenous fend for themselves. Off you go. Have a nice time. Bang! So there you go, parents. An Aussie game your Aussie kids will love while they learn. My turn. Timmy, give that gun back to Caleb. You know you should only have that stick. Bang! <sighs> kids. Well, I must say, what a wonderful game. You know, we used to play a game very similar to that when I was a boy. I bet you looked real cute in that little outfit. Oh, no, there's no need for dress-ups. Everyone knew their rightful place without the need of a costume. Yeah, right. Well, I just simply cannot believe it, but here we are at the end of episode one of series three. As good reason as any to make a pastilla. Hey, the return of the rations. <laughs> That's right, Penny. I think everyone missed my home cooking last year, and some may have even suffered because of it. I mean, look at Todd. Looks like he's wasting away. Sigourney, I do like it when you look after me. So what is a pastilla? It's a Moroccan pigeon pie dusted with icing sugar. Sweet pigeon pie. My words are gone. You really shouldn't have gone to any bother. Oh, no bother. Just a pleasure. Now make sure you join us next week for a very special event. It's just so exciting. Next week we'll all actually be there live when the bandages come off Dr Rudy's face. Now remember, this special event is just before next week's show at the very special time of Monday night, 9 o'clock. Yes, write that special time down. It's a special event you wouldn't want to miss. And in the meantime, why not take a trip outside your comfort zone? And remember to be good to one another. Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia. Now, who wants the first piece? Oh,